Hey, scholars. So we have another day just to talk about something exciting like math. So I wanted to share with you how we can do long division. I know it's been a minute since we've reviewed that, so let's take an opportunity. So if you would please bear with me as I share my screen. And we get started. I am an awesome, brilliant child, determined eternally for greatness, helpful, intelligent, joyful, kind, loving, mindful, and naturally outstanding, phenomenal, questioning, respectable, smart, talented, unique, and virtuous, wise, exciting, youthful, and zealous, and then some. Let's choose our norm for the day. So normally, you know, we have these options. You can be well-dressed, well-organized, well-balanced, well-read, well-spoken, or well-traveled. Which well will you be today? I'm sure you did an amazing job on choosing your well. So, Let's talk about dividing whole numbers. So I know this is kind of like redundant because we haven't talked about it in a while, but I also know that we struggle with this. And so it's a good time for us to do some practice. So the question would be, how can you divide multi-digit whole numbers? No, we've talked about this before. And so it's kind of like, oh man. <laughs> but some things have to be done so we can get to our perfection. So some math words, the word dividend, the word dividend is a number to be divided in a division problem. The divisor, the, the number you are dividing by in a division problem. And then the quotient, the result when one number is divided by another. This idea of a partial quotient division. So quickly we have our dividend here the number being divided our divisor the number doing the dividing the number going into a number and then the quotient is going to be our result so we have a divided dividend divided by a divisor equaling our quotient notice how they have the same division problem just written out in different forms so quickly we see this one example where it says uh, 746 this is our dividend divided by four, our divisor. So this strategy says, what can I multiply, multiply the divisor by to get close to the dividend without going over? Often we use multiples of 10 and 100. So if I say 100, four times 100 will get me 400, right? And so now I'm trying to see what numbers on the side are a part of the quotient, a part of my quotient up here that's gonna add up. So I have 100, four times 100 is 400. Here you see 746 minus 400. Now I'm left with 346. Now four, nothing times 100, or rather four times 100 is not gonna get me this. It's gonna get me something less than that. So I've already went to my hundreds. Right now, I want to exhaust my tens. So here we have eight or eighty. Eighty times four is three hundred and twenty. So now we have three forty-six minus three twenty, and left with twenty-six. Now, what number times four is going to get us twenty-six or something close to it? Six. So six times four is twenty-four. 26 minus 24 is two. We're gonna repeat this strategy until we can't subtract anymore. So what times four can get me 746 or something close to 100? And then continuing, you see the next thing with 80 and then six. Then this third part where it says add up all the partial quotients. We have 100, plus 80 plus six. So we have 186 added together. 
and two remainder. So if we double check our work, or rather we would double check our work with multiplication. And then you see it explained here once more. So let's look at this example one more time. So we have 583 divided by four, right? There's our dividend, here's our divisor. So we're gonna look at the big number first. Our number is about five, somewhere about 500, 600. So let's pick 583, right, where we have. So what's the closest number we can get to it is 400. So again, you'll see here, 100 times four, it's gonna get us 400. So 583 minus 400 gets us 183, that's right. And then we're gonna to go to the next quotient. We can't use 100 again because we already exceeded that. Right, we're gonna to go to the tens. 4 times 40 is 160. 183 minus 160 is 23. Now we're thinking again, what times four gets us 23 is something close to it. Five, four times five is 20. 23 minus 20 equals three. And then we have our quotients to, or rather our partial quotients to add up. 100 plus 40 plus five is 145. And we're left with the remainder of three again. All right, so estimating quotients. A local zoo had a total of 98,464 visitors last year. The zoo was open every day except for three holidays. On average, about how many visitors did the zoo have each day? All right, so first it says, to estimate the average number of visitors per day, you can divide the total number of visitors by the number of days. To estimate the quotient, first estimate the dividend by rounding the number of visitors to the nearest thousand. So let's do that. 98,464 rounded to the nearest 10,000 is, right, 100,000. There are 365 days in a year. How many days was the petting zoo open? Well, we know the information said that it was open every day except for three holidays. So 365 minus three will get us 362. Uh, part C, this is estimate the divisor by rounding the number of days that the zoo was open to the nearest hundred. 362 rounded to nearest hundred is 400. Estimate the quotient, 100,000 divided by 400. We get the 100,000 from us rounding 98,464. The total number of visitors, right, our dividend, 100,000, divided by our average, or rather our estimated divisor, which is 400. And so we have the estimated quotient of 100,000 divided by 400 equals 250. The average number of visitors per day, per day last year was about 250. Now, how can you check that your quotient is right? Multiply the divisor and the quotient. See, I left this part because I thought it would be vital. Just to remember that we can always check our answers when it comes to dividing by doing the opposite operation. So here, if we're dividing, to check our answer, we would do multiplication. All right, so quickly here, you can see that I tried an example, and then hopefully when we get in class, we can work it out together but it's the same concept. So eight times what will get me 500 or something close to it? Well, 100 is not an option here because eight times 100 is gonna give me 800 and that's too much for 534. So I'm gonna put a zero. 
right? Eight times zero, zero. But the next number, I'm gonna try my tens. Eight times 60 will give me 480. 480 leaves me 54, rather 534 minus 480 leaves me 54. Then what times eight gives me 54? Seven. So I put my 60 here, six, blank, and then seven in one's place. If I've added my quotients, I have 60 plus seven, 67. So here are a few more problems, and I would love for you to try it on your own. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope to talk to you soon. All right, guys, love you, and I'm out of here.